Now that we have these models in our database, we need to be able to represent all of these relationships between these tables right here. Because all we have right now are these foreign keys, but they don't tell us the kind of relationships that exist in, in these tables, and we need some way to do that. So let's go ahead and examine this particular relationship right here between the churches and the services tables and then we will see how that works and then we can expand it to other relationships. So I'm going to start uh, by editing the church model and right now it says belongs to user. What we want to do is have something similar to that for the search. Uh, service. So what in, in this case it has many services and this is just a nice little method right here that says our church ha can have many services. We don't know how many but uh, more than one and so that's why this uh, right here is, is plural. And by saving that and then editing our service model we can see that it belongs to church. Now where did that belongs to church come from? Well, that was from our migration. Uh, in our migration, we said that our service references our church. So it knew to add this text belongs to church in here um, because it knew that that, that service um, had a foreign key the, this church ID right here that referenced back to church and so this is the text that we do to say that a, a model, the, in this case the service, it has a foreign key into a, another model, in this case the, the church model. Now the reason if we go back to our church the reason why this has many services wasn't automatically added since Rails knew that that reference was in play uh, was that it doesn't know the kind of relationship that exists here. It doesn't know if it's a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many, a many-to-many. Uh, those uh, all could theoretically be possible and so it can't insert this has many in here. It can only insert the belongs to because in this case we know uh, on this side of the model we have a direct foreign key that points to this and so it makes it real easy for it to just add that in there. Now if this belongs to a user hadn't been in here then when we tried to do this c.user method call it would have broken because it wouldn't have known that this user ID is associated with the user table. We need to tell it that with this right here belongs to user. So if um, since that's all saved, uh, if I go back here and restart the, the Rails console, what we can see here, let's go ahead and load up the church that we created before. We can go ahead and and go C equals uh, church find we can find our first church and uh, we can see that these are the values that are stored in here notice it's user ID and just like before we can say c dot user because this is the the user that um, is in charge of creating that church page but we also can say c dot services and uh, right now uh, we can see that it returns a what's called an active directive proxy um, let's do turn it into an array and yay it's an empty array which it should be because we haven't added any services to that church yet um, and notice that every time we're accessing the database we're getting SQL automatically generated for us here we're going into the users table and we're finding the user whose ID is equal to the user that's a foreign key in our, our church. 
And likewise, now we're finding all the services where their church ID is equal to one. They're, so their foreign key equals the, the church that we have selected up here. So um, Rails is, is automatically doing all this and we will keep looking at this because it's really nice to be able to see the SQL that Rails is generating for us. One, it, to be able to see how to to create the SQL in that way, but also two, we may see, oh, that's not the smartest way to do it. Maybe we should be reorganizing our method calls so so that we um, are able to do something more performant or uh, more um, useful in in uh, our task at hand. Um, and and so we have this this user method and the the services method be created because of these two calls this belongs to and this has many and they're not actual stored in the database they are used to access the database and get us the values that are represented by these relationships the relationship with the user model and the relationship with the service model to to be able to grab uh, our who we're associated with.